Good morning, everybody. Morning. It's another Tuesday, so uh, it's, it's two for one Tuesday. You get two for the price of one live stream. How good is that here at the Epiphany Church? <laughs> Chris and I were chatting about things that, well, we could use for a topic for this morning's live stream, and we noticed something sort of interesting, at least interesting to us. We have been doing in-person worship now for about a month, and we've had to institute a reservation system, and it's been, well, it's been different, hasn't it? Uh, and yet, different doesn't mean bad, it just means different. For there have been some wonderful surprises and some just beautiful moments of grace. We noticed as we were giving communion on Palm Sunday outside in our beautiful courtyard that, like every other Sunday since we reopened, there were a lot of faces that we didn't recognize. We have we have really reached a whole lot of people, I think, during COVID through our technology by all of the different things that we do. And there are a whole lot of people now who feel like they are part of Epiphany, and they are, even if they've never set foot on the property before. And that is another one of those incredible gifts from COVID. There really are some. But we also noticed that some of these newer folks are not probably uh, cradle Episcopalians, and they don't have that deep understanding. So we thought this morning we might talk a bit about what it might feel like to become an Epiphanite, uh, what, it, what it is to be here at our church. Uh, maybe some words of wisdom. Chris, you wanna, you wanna kick that off for us? Well, I guess, I guess that I'm seeing that as inevitable that uh, we'll all need to be aware of conscious of and then intentional about the fact that people coming to Epiphany are going to be coming from a wider range of previous religious experience or complete lack thereof. Mm. The first 300 years of this country was pretty much assumed that the great majority of people were Christian and active and went to church on Sunday. Those days are long gone. Um, it has now been decades that the number one checked box when people talk about their religiosity is none or unchurched. So we need to remind ourselves that some of the people who come here hungry for God and a closer relationship to all things good, true, and beautiful might know very, very little about what's going on. I mean, they've seen one service online. So those of us who are here and welcoming them we need to be very open to what's going on, and we want to help without being preachy. Let's just take, for example, one thing that Father Rick and I both noticed, too. The number of people who, during communion, are going like this, or just sitting there like, no thank you, because their hands know, are They don't out. know what to do. Yeah. They don't know what to do. Of course, right in that situation, our job is to put them completely at their ease. And we say, would you care for a blessing? And we like to think that we ask it in a way that either answer is fine. They can say, no thanks, or I'd love it. We're here to serve and to give them the God that they're open to. And uh, in terms of the people who know to go like this, meaning I don't want communion, is that because they never do and they know that this is just not part of their religious practice? Or is it because they're still COVID concerned? We don't know, but either way, we need to be open to all the possibilities. And it doesn't matter to us which one of those it is. Of course not. Let me just ins insert this. If, if you don't receive the bread, you are in no way any less a part of the communion. Okay, so please, please feel free and fully invited to not receive and still feel like you are 100% part of the family and what we're doing. Sorry, I had to make that point. No, it's a good point to make that we not be literalistic, even especially like this this being Holy Week, to remember that the Last Supper, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was not there. She did not receive the bread. Uh, Judas, the betrayer of Jesus, did receive did. the bread. So <laughs> clearly, <laughs> receiving the bread is no guarantee of um, sacredness, I think. And so we shouldn't attach that sort of better or worse valuation of it. Mm just it's non-dualistic thank you <laughs> <laughs> but I, I guess my primary message on all this 
this increased variety of, of persons coming to the Epiphany Church is just to say, let's all be aware of it and be really lovingly responsive and welcoming to everyone. Not thinking, oh my goodness, they don't know the first thing about church going. But instead to think, huh, excellent. <laughs> Someone, what, a, what a great thing. Exactly. We're so glad you're here. Welcome. Come right. be part of what we do. And if you are one of those folks who is, is newer uh, or maybe feeling just, boy, I'd like to go, but I'm not sure how I would be greeted because I'm not sure I understand it all. Well, first of all, come. Come be among us. We, we do a pretty good job at welcome here at the Epiphany Church. But if you still are a little unsure, or if you're coming but still don't quite understand how we do what we do or why we do what we do, take heart. On, uh, on Saturday, May the 1st, we will be offering another in our ongoing series of Epiphany 101 class. Yay. We've put together a curriculum about, and the, the subtitle, I like this one, is Everything You Ever Wanted to Know About Epiphany Episcopal Church But Were Afraid to Ask. We're going to cover all of that kind of stuff with you. So we'll, we'll talk about... What does it mean to be part of the church? Who are we? What do we believe? What are the different orders of ministry? How can I get involved? Uh, we'll define a bunch of things that you might not understand, like what is Monday Thursday? I think we'll talk about that a little bit more in another live stream this week. But we're going to put that program on for anybody who has sort of joined the church during our COVID time. And yes, before you ask the question, it will be both online and broadcast. I'm not totally sure how yet, but we will find a way to make sure that it is a both and because that's who we've become. We've become a both and community. Um, I, uh, dovetailing with that too, I'd like to say that not only Epiphany, but the Episcopal Church itself has some reputation and deserved and well-earned for being an embracing place of every sort and manner of person, mm. socioeconomic, um, levels of education, uh, skin color, political orientation. The Episcopal Church actually does reasonably well to very well, I find, yeah. at being able to be the via media and to be open to all opinions, knowing that no one's obligated to... Um, believe everything or, uh, uh, you know, ascribe themselves to a certain position, socio-politically, economically, even uh, Maundy Thursday, which Father Rick just mentioned. That's something that is a very important service with the foot washing for some, and there are others saying, eh, it doesn't work for me. All of it is okay. We're here to provide things, spiritual nurture, and we trust that God's Holy Spirit will guide everybody to those things which are of value. And in some cases, that means guiding people away from the things that will be of less value. But the main point I'm making is Epiphanites, be aware that a very diverse crew of people will be coming to Epiphany hungry for God, hungry for love, and let's love on all of them without exception. The sign that sits right on our driveway has the big Episcopal shield, and it says Epiphany Episcopal Church, and underneath it in big block letters, it says, you are welcome here. There's no asterisk. You are welcome here. Everybody is welcome here. And so, sisters, brothers, we hope to see you either online or in person because that's what God calls us to do and to be.